Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Well, if that ain't paradise, I don't know what is. It's, it's incredible. It's just amazing. We have never seen anything like this. This is the best day ever. G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jack and this is Megan if you're new here. We have just finished our lap of Australia in our Toyota trip, Kate. Yes, you might notice that we are not in our trippy <laughs> like we usually are for these things, looking a bit green screen here. But <laughs> today we're going to be sharing with you our top 10 national parks that we visited on our lap. Yep, uh, we know there's probably hundreds or thousands of national parks in Australia and we definitely didn't visit them all. Mm -hmm. We will eventually um, in years to come, but uh, these are definitely the ones that stood out for yeah. us. Okay, so we'll start with number 10 on our list, Cape Legrand National Park, Esperance, Western Australia. Now it is, it's amazing. Yeah, it is 100% what you see on Instagram, what you yeah. see online, the blue of the water. You won't see it anywhere else, I don't think. No. Not in Australia anyway. When we went there, the weather was bad. It was mm -hmm. over overcast, I think it was. And it was very windy and it was still so yeah. it was still amazing so, so you can just imagine yeah. what it would look like on a summer day it would be spectacular so it's about 30 minutes out of the town of esperance and being a wa national park there is an entrance fee which i believe is yeah. about 15 dollars per vehicle but we would definitely recommend getting yourself an annual parks yeah. pass for wa because it pretty much pays for itself within about seven park visits yeah it definitely so, did it helped yeah but and also like stops you stuffing around stopping and paying for so stuff you, know, you can, can just drive, drive straight, straight through in. one thing as well i'll tell you is, is we never got stopped once on the whole lap and got asked for our passes mm. ever but still but they could pay for them. <laughs> you never know, they could have been like patrolling Maybe. car parks yeah. and things Maybe. when we go off. But we never came in contact with a ranger or anything. Mm. So, but yeah, just a, just a little tip, <laughs> tip of the day. So camping in the National Park, there are two paid ones. So there's Lucky Bay Campground and La Grand Beach Campground. $15 per person per night and yep. you do have access to toilets and showers there. They book out so quickly, so, very quick. so far in advance. So if you are planning on camping at one of those, I would definitely suggest getting in early. We could not get no. booking there. There is a free camp as well uh, at a place called Dunn Rocks. There's a drop toilet there and it's uh, it's free. So Yeah, but it is quite a bit further away from yeah. Lucky Bay, but it is on your way to Wharton's Beach, which yeah. is apparently a really beautiful beach that we didn't get a chance to yeah. visit. Another little insider tip we'll share with you is that you have to go visit Little Hellfire Bay. So yeah. there's Hellfire Bay and then there's a short, I'd say what, 20, 20 minute, 20 minute 25 walk. 25 minute walk. And then you come to, which I will uh, ni a ninety percent guarantee your own private beach. Yeah, we, we had two <laughs> two other people there at the time. We walked down and they were, they were nude swimming around in the water because they, they thought that it was hundred percent they were going to have it by themselves. Apparently. It was classic. They ran out of the water like you've never seen before and grabbed their clothes. So and then you, we yeah. had it to ourselves. Yeah, and then we <laughs> had it to ourselves. Nude. It was gold. But yeah, that's pretty much Esperance, eh? Yep. Number nine, we've got Penalulu National Park or the Bungle Bungles <laughs> yep. in WA. It's uh it's it's a special place. There's a, there's a whole vibe going on there. It's just, it is special. Anything when you're sort of surrounded by something that you know is so ancient and yeah. so spiritual, it's just an amazing experience. It was wicked. So it's about three hours from Kununurra, about 250 kilometers to the entrance of the national park. And the entrance of the national park, you do need a four wheel drive for. Yes. There's a few water crossings, very corrugated and it's about 53 kilometers yep. from the highway to the visitor center. Yeah, you could probably do it in an X-Trail or a Subaru, Forester, those kind of cars, but there is some puddles there that you you probably get away with not having a snorkel, but- Nothing came might, like up to the bonnet or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, no, but think. you might be pushing it. Yeah. And yeah, the corrugations, I don't know if you already said it, they were pretty bad. So your camping options there, there are two national park 
campgrounds yep. within the national park. Obviously, you've got one for the northern side and one for the southern side of the park, which we will yeah. get into a bit later. Again, they're very uh, they're a big distance from each yeah. other. So, and then there is also a caravan park on the entry yeah. before you hit all those corrugations, and then a free roadside rest stop outside the park as yes. well, which we stayed in. I think we stayed in the rest stop, yeah, the rest and then stop. we stayed yeah. in the national park, and then we stayed in the rest stop yeah. again, so we could maximise our Time it's literally just park. outside the national yeah. park and it is very it's nice being in wa the national park ones cost 13 dollars per person per night yeah. so a bit on the pricier side all right so we should we get on to why you should visit the northern side and the south side yeah so, so we've got the north. all of our hikes split up into those two sections so yeah. on the northern side if you are camping at Currajong, we've got heaps of different hikes to do there the number one one that i would say to, you have to go visit is echidna chasm it is spectacular and if you can try and visit between the hours of 11 a.m yeah. and midday because the sun comes up over the rocks and it just glows lights up the this tunnel of <laughs> I can't even explain it. Yeah, it's so beautiful. It was a very special experience. And um, then there's heaps of other different walks there. Both the northern and southern sides have lookouts as well. Yep. So depending on where you're camping, I would definitely suggest going to one of those lookouts for sunset because yeah. that's what we did. We had dinner. You don't just watch the sun go down either. Even after the sun sets, the rocks continue to change colour mm. for another 10 minutes afterwards and yep. it's just beautiful. So the southern campground is called... Waladi. Waladi. Now... Yep. It's pretty nice. Yeah, that's um, where we camped. You book your site and then yeah. you just pick where you want to go. It's There's nice a and shaded. Generator area and a yeah. quiet area, and then the southern walks that we've got. I didn't realize this until we got there. You can actually walk through those beautiful beehive domes, just yeah. weave through them, and then there's Piccanelli Lookout as well. There, we can just look out over this valley of domes, and it's just incredible. Yeah, and also. <laughs> Cathedral Gorge. It's uh, just so special. Yeah. I keep saying it, but it really is a special place. And there's heaps of others as well that we didn't get a chance to yeah. do, including an overnight one. So yeah. if you're a bit more of an adventurous hiker, I would suggest. And also keep one. in mind, it is hot. Mm. It is really hot. But that is what is good about those southern walks as well, especially Cathedral Gorge. They're very yeah. shaded. Yeah. The whole experience was... It was good, but it's tiring. Mm. You do get tired, especially with the drive in and the drive out. Mm -hmm. And then driving elsewhere within the national park, it, you're going to get tired. So That's why we were fine with not doing every single yeah. walk. I think we picked maybe three or four yeah. to visit, yeah. and it was just perfect. It was brilliant. Okay, so number eight on the list is the Great Otway Forest in Victoria and the Border Ranges National Park in New South Wales. We tied them together because... I couldn't decide yeah. what was our favourite rainforest. Yeah. They're just so beautiful, but... We'll start with the Otways. So yep. we camped at a place called Air Crossing, which was completely free and just spectacular. In the middle of nowhere. We literally just weaved down into yep. the middle of the rainforest and it was our first ever experience with any kind of rainforest before. Yep. It, so it was really special. Was, I said it felt like we were camping in the zoo because yep. it was just so foreign. And also we had the whole thing to ourselves, this <laughs> campground, and it was quite intimidating in a way. Like the trees just... <laughs> going over the top of you and all that kind of stuff but you wake up in the morning and it is just amazing yeah it's just and, so peaceful yeah. and there's a uh, huge huntsman's there as well we picked <laughs> that's where we picked up our huntsman so be cautious and close your doors and wind your windows up mm, but if you get a nice day as well there's a nice little swimming hole you can yeah, there go is. swimming in yeah. as well. well i don't know if it's technically a swimming hole but it's like a little cascading waterfall yeah. that's so beautiful and there's heaps to see around the old ways as well we went and visited hopetown falls yeah. you can also visit the redwoods forest mates rest rainforest oh walk, there's I believe so it was many <laughs> but that one was just so beautiful you're walking yeah. under these massive ferns and these yeah, yeah. ancient trees around and the old ways is actually where we spotted our first wild koala as yeah, well. they 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 make weird noises, guys. <laughs> but with those uh, all these different rainforests, different spots you can go to. The special thing about it is they always change. The scenery changes at every single yeah, one. Yeah, even though they're all rainforests, there's yeah. something unique about each one of them. So we'll move yeah, on to cool. Border Ranges National Park in New South Wales. So we camped at a place called Sheep Station Creek. There, yep. twelve dollars per person per night. Again, um, it's in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I think there is another walk in campsite for yep. your hiking tenting type mm. of people we're not those type of people <laughs> when you do stay at sheep station as well there is a hike that starts at your campground so that yep. was brush box falls. yeah bit of history there it's pretty cool <laughs> chuck gloves <laughs> <laughs> and then it comes to a waterfall it's just 
awesome. Yeah, and there's heaps of other little walks to do there as well. We did the Helmholtzier yep. loop and visited these massive lookouts that just look over. Yeah, and there was just all this rainforest. It's just amazing. In that other walk, there was silkworms everywhere, just <laughs> hanging down from the trees. It was just a cool experience. All right, so number seven, Lawn Hill. Now. We weren't expecting it. I had never even heard of Lawn Hill until after we'd left. It's in Queensland. We met guys, a traveller who said, oh, you're going to Lawn Hill. And we were, we were like, oh, I guess. And then he was like, no, you have to go. It, so I'm very thankful to that man. It's a hidden oasis. Mm -hmm. It just opens up. So onto the camping. Yep. There is a national park one and we bloody love Queensland National Park camping because it's so cheap. It's only yes. $6.75 $6. per person per night. Yeah, so it's, it's the cheapest of... All the states. But that one was fully booked out. Yeah, and you don't have to pay any entrance fees to the National Park yeah. either. Yeah. But yeah, we stayed at Adele's Grove, which if we had been planners and we'd realised that we were going during school holiday time or if we had thought ahead about booking, we would have definitely <laughs> tried to get into that National Park one because Adele's was $40. Yeah, we stuffed up. <laughs> and, I mean, uh, it's nice if you, you know, that you've got a restaurant and you've yeah. got a water private water hole there as well. We'll link Lawn Hill video up top as well um, and you can find out what made me sick there. <laughs> so go watch that. We didn't include the fact that you got sick there oh, in the I video. Got, I got sick um, of what I ate, so you've got to go watch that to find out. And you understand why. But yeah, no, that, that place was, uh, there was a lot of children running around. Yeah, so I would suggest, um, you know, unless you have children yeah, yourself, yeah, yeah. don't go during school holidays. Yeah. It, but even though it was very busy, um, we managed to get a nice little secluded yeah. spot and it was very quiet. It's massive, yeah. But you're, you're... the National Park itself and the actual walks were just amazing. Yeah. If you can also be more organised than us, try and book yourself a canoe. Yeah, because you're gonna wanna go for a canoe as yeah. soon as you see those gorges and that water. I'm not uh, someone to do that kind of stuff, especially with crocodiles in the water, yeah. but I wanted to do it. That's how special it is. Mm -hmm. So the walks that we did was the Indari Falls walk, yeah. and then we walked up to the upper gorge lookout where you can literally just see out yeah. over this whole gorge. And then for sunrise, we went and did Constance Range Yeah, walk. I did not want to get up we that didn't, morning. Neither one of us did. And then but we had the best sunrise that we've ever seen yeah. in our life. It was just spectacular. amazing. <laughs> we keep saying it's spectacular, <laughs> amazing, awesome, but honestly, it is. All right, um, number six, we've got the Daintree National yes, Park the Daintree. in tropical North Queensland. It's a uh, 150 million year old rainforest mm -hmm. now why wouldn't you want to go there <laughs> it's pretty cool so for camping there there's obviously a few like resort style things yep. and caravan parks but we stayed at noah's beach camp which yep, is the national park one so very very cheap small campsites yeah so be aware of that i was thinking oh we're just one car with a pop top i'll yep. just book the smallest one just in case someone else yeah. comes with a big rig and wants to book it and it said for like three people, like comfortable for three to five people. No, and so yeah, don't trust if that. you actually do have a group of five people, book the biggest one yep. that they have available, I would There's, say. There's uh, coconuts everywhere, so you can cut open a coconut and have a drink. And the beach, it's literally right on the yep. beach as well. So if you can get up for sunrise, sunrise there as yeah. well, because the sun comes up over the ocean. Yes. It's just amazing. Yes, definitely go for sunrise. So other things to do in the Dane Tree, obviously go and check out Cape Tribulation yep. Beach. And I've forgotten the name of it, but the little island... You'll see it when you're driving. You're driving past and you'll just see it through the trees. There's this little tiny island off the coast. Nobody really talks about no it. No one talks about but it. You but you will see it. That's like some of our favourite drone footage we've ever got. Yeah, is yeah. That place. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And what was your favourite part? Uh, the ice cream <laughs> shop. You've got to go to the ice cream shop. They make all their own ice cream. They grow all their own trees, it's fruit like, trees. Um, what's the word? Um, Tropical. Yeah. No, but there's a word for it. Forgot the word. I don't know. Weird foods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very odd tasting fruits. But you have to stop at the ice cream shop. So again, no national park entry fees because we're in Queensland. Yep. But you do have to pay for your ferry. Yeah, so the barge. One way it was $14 and then if you want to get a return trip, $26. So yep. very, very cheap. The bloke on the barge that we had was an absolute, absolute classic. Character. He was a character. <laughs> so if you're watching and you've met him before, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Okay, number five, we've got Paluma Range National Park in Queensland. Yeah. Another one that 
I had no idea about until we got to that area. And I, this is probably one of the only times I did this, but we went to the caravan park in Townsville and I had no idea what was around. So I grabbed all of those tourism yeah. booklets. I have like a stack like this and I just went through and found literally everywhere I wanted to visit around that area. Yeah. And it was just such a standout for me. Yeah. We've got those rock slides, which I'm sure you know how much fun it's if you've cool. seen our other videos. I had so much fun there. So that was Big Crystal Creek. Yep. You've also got Little Crystal Creek with this beautiful historic bridge that you can visit mm. there as well. Keep going further up that hill and you've got massive lookouts. Paradise Pool, which is right next to your camping if you're staying in the yep. National Park. The water is so clear. Yeah. So for camping, we've got Big Crystal Creek Campground, a National Park one, yep. nice and cheap. Toilets and cold showers there as well. Yep. It's not too far away from your attractions. Yeah, you can walk to Paradise Pool yep. from the campground. Yep, so it's pretty good. And then I'm not sure if it is actually part of Paloma Range National Park, but there's also Drama Falls, which is a very, very short drive yep. from that whole area as well. Very similar to Big Crystal Creek, you've got Drama Falls Campground and then you can walk to Drama Falls yep. as well. And that actual campground was really beautiful. It was really dense yeah. trees and things. Okay, so number four, Cape Range National Park in Exmouth. WA. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, for our regular viewers, you'll know that I don't really like going into the water, but I went in there. <laughs> I got in. I couldn't miss out. It was the best experience ever. Yeah. It's known for its snorkeling. It's supposed to, I mean, we don't know because we didn't visit the Great Barrier Reef, but it is known to rival the Great Barrier Reef for its snorkeling. Yeah. And uh, what we it's experienced cool. was amazing. Exmouth is known for being quite windy, so yeah. keep an eye on your wind levels and your tide times as well, yeah. um, because that can affect your snorkeling as well. Yeah. So for camping, there is heaps of different national park campsites. All, all up the coast. Yeah, there's so many different ones to choose from. If you're in the same situation we were in, what we did, we were only booking a few days prior. Yeah, so we planet. just opened tabs of every single campground and just tried to squeeze in to any site. We scored one. That's it. <laughs> one so. over like three weeks yeah. we were looking to stay there. But so again, it's, get in a bit early. <laughs> it's packed. Um, it was v a very busy town. But the sites are all marked so you're not going to be squeezed up against yep. anyone or anything like that. Really good campgrounds. Yeah. So our standouts, we've stayed in about four there and Jack's absolute favourite is Mesa Campground yep. there. Because you can drive your car onto the beach. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Boggy sand, so not as many people come there. Yeah, you can't camp on the beach, no. but you can camp on your campground and then you just, yeah, drive it's down like to this 50, beautiful beach. It's like a 100 metre walk from the campground. And yeah. also North Mandu was a really nice one as well because yeah. they had about five little resident kangaroos, kangaroos living there. Yeah. So they were really cute. And cool. also the beach there was like all pebbles. Do you yes. remember that? Yes, it's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your attractions. Mm -hmm. Oyster Stacks is the first one I'd say. It is amazing. Um, for snorkeling. Yeah, for snorkeling, sorry. <laughs> Not just stacks of oysters or whatever. <laughs> you have to be careful. You have to go at high tide. Yeah, make sure you're yeah. checking your tide times there. It has to be over 1.2 meters, yeah. I believe. Otherwise, you're just not allowed to snorkel there at all because no. you'll crush the reef. It gets really busy yeah. as well, so go early. Mm -hmm. We, I think we yeah. got there at eight o'clock seven seven yeah. eight o'clock and it's it's perfect there's not too many people so turquoise bay is another really beautiful snorkeling yeah. area and south lafroy bay no one really talks about south yeah. lafroy bay as a snorkeling area because it is it's not really known as a snorkeling area but there's a turtle there's a resident turtle who's just and always chilling there and we got so close <laughs> to the turtle it was it was, it was awesome. amazing. I'd never done that. We had both never done that. Never. And it was just so chilled out, just swimming in the water. It, yeah. was, it was wicked. <laughs> and then another thing that you have to go see as well in Cape Range is the turtle resting area. Yes. Is it resting? Yeah, the resting. Yeah, the turtle resting area. Um, go at high tide because that's when they all come in. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't. We went at low tide, so there wasn't as many, but there is hundreds. Hundreds, hundreds of them, and they're massive. Yeah. So, yeah. Those are the standout places there, eh? And one more thing you can do there as well. There's a hike, Mandu Mandu yeah. Gorge, yep. which is really beautiful as well. And that was really, really unique because we'd never done a hike that had that sort of pebble. No, it was like an old river, old river yeah. bed. Um, but don't go when it's hot because it, it's open the whole time. Yeah, and, and the get flies roasted. are really bad as yeah, well. Yeah, the flies are bad. But yeah. once you get up the hill, you can just look out over this massive gorge and you can see the ocean as well. So yeah. it's really beautiful. Just before we get into our top three national parks in Australia, we just want to let everybody know that our website is now live and we have our first ever blog post available to view. And it is all these national parks that we're listing today with a few extra tips and tricks in there and all kinds of different photos for you to see. 
and give you a really good idea of what, what you're in for. And it's all been made possible by the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. If you're looking to design your own website or blog, we would highly suggest you check out Squarespace. Their user-friendly templates make website design fun and easy and the finished product really does look like it's been done by a professional. It's not just for blogging though, Squarespace has everything you need to create any kind of website including your own e-commerce store with the ability to view all traffic analytics as well. So if you're keen to check it out, head over to squarespace.com for your own free trial and then when you're ready to launch your website, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash jmexploring for 10% off your first purchase of yep. a website or domain. Go check it out guys, we're extremely excited. <laughs> So number three, we've got Litchfield National Park in the Northern Territory. If you just want to experience the most amazing waterfalls all in one place, I would say, yep, go it's, to Litchfield. It's literally one big loop mm -hmm. and you can go check out whatever you want on the way. You and don't. it's so easily accessible, you don't even need a four-wheel drive. Or there was for one, one that we <laughs> went to it and it was a pretty special place. Yeah. But um, yeah, if you've got a four-wheel drive, you have to go to that. Well, now, this, this part of the park, we'll get into that in a bit. Yep. But yeah, so camping, we've got National Park camping there. I believe there's about three yep. that you can choose from, $10 per person per night. And Snake I was, think it's just sort of first come, first serve. Yeah, it is, yeah. So that is the sort of downside if you make the venture out there in the hopes to snag a camp spot. I would definitely yeah. suggest going early in the day. Be careful with that one. And also, you can't book it. Megan said you can't book it. Yeah. Uh, and it's cash only. Mm -hmm. and the ranger comes and gets it. And we will be honest, the ranger never came and got our money. So. Yeah, and we only had a $50 note. So. Yeah, <laughs> we only had a $50 note. We didn't know that. So we didn't know that it was cash only. Yeah. So yeah, be careful. Don't get... Don't get caught on that one. Mm -hmm. So there's um, heaps of waterfalls and water holes to visit. I'd say top favorites would be Florence Falls, which is the most popular and the busiest, I would say. Yeah. Bully Rock Holes and Janeiro Falls. Yeah. Once again, don't don't try and do everything because mm -hmm. you won't enjoy it. Well, I think you could if you were spending a bit longer. Yeah. We did it in like two, two days. and a half days. Yeah. Oh, and also for camping as well, we stayed at a caravan park just sort yeah. of at the entry, which was the same price. It was only $10 per person Zebra per night. Ze it's called Zebra Stone, and yeah. you had access to hot showers there. And scones. Well. And scones. Bloody scones, mate. <laughs> Litchfield National Park reminded us of the Gibb River Road. For, for like the attractions. Yeah, the attractions. So it, it, it was kind of like... Kind of like the best of both worlds because yeah. we got to see all of these amazing places and didn't have to worry about the troopy yeah. at all. Didn't have to worry about wrecking the troopy over the corrugation. And yeah, so. there was only one corrugated road and that was to that, Sandy that, Creek or yeah. Janeiro Falls and there was a pretty deep... That was the deepest water crossing we'd ever done at that time as yeah. well. So yeah. So it's a bit of fun getting to But yeah, Litchfield, Litchfield is another special place. Mm -hmm. What's number two? Caragini. Caragini is amazing. <laughs> We're getting so two and one are just like. I think they're kind of tied in a way. Yeah. It was very hard to differentiate. So our second favorite from our first favorite. Yeah. Caragini yeah. is just like you get there and you see your first gorge and you just have to keep looking at it because mm -hmm. you don't. You just can't fathom. <laughs> you can't fathom it. So camping there, they got Dale's Gorge and Eco Retreats, mm -hmm. and there is a free one. Oh yeah, There's that's right. <laughs> I forgot about that one. So we'll get into that. So Dale's Gorge is how much are they? Uh, that's a national park one, so I think it's about thirteen per 13 person bucks. per night. Okay, so thirteen bucks for Dale's Gorge, and you would go and visit Fernpool and Fortescue, Fortescue Falls. Falls. Uh, Fernpool is my favourite waterhole in Australia. It's pretty special. Get down there early and you're going to have the most special experience ever. It is just amazing. And uh, Fortescue Falls is before Fernpool, so yeah, it's all so in one walk spot. down there and then, yeah. Yeah, so you come through Fortescue Falls and you go into Fernpool and it's all accessible from Dale's campground. Mm -hmm. Toilets are clean, there's a dump point there and the campgrounds are very spaced out and you probably will snag a spot there because it's massive. Mm -hmm. It's a big campground. And there's an overflow as well. Yeah. So. And another thing is people worried about water. There's water tanks there, uh, a little bit of a drive away, but untreated. They're, they're untreated water, so that, that's a pretty good little bonus. Mm -hmm. And then We actually, the first time we ever visited, we ran out of water there, so that yeah, came in handy. Did. That. <laughs> and then you would head over to 
Eco Retreat. Which is a bit more expensive. Yeah, so I think that was 22 yeah. per person per night. But you got hot showers and flushing toilets. And also, if you want to have some dinner, they make awesome burgers mm -hmm. right there in front of you. So that was actually one of the best burgers. And I've there's a bar. Had. There's a bar there as well in yeah. the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so that's a pretty cool place. But they don't do chips. No chips for some reason. We don't know why. Something we to, tried to ask. but Something to do with oil. We, we don't know why. Don't know. If someone knows, let us know. Yeah. Hot we chips would be curious. good. Um, and then from Eco Retreat, you'd go and visit Hancock Gorge. Yep. Joffrey's Gorge is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. They've put some ladders in there. We'll link a video up top. Uh, we went and visited it. But yeah, they've put some ladders. It's But it's still it's a, a bit, very fun hike. It's even a bit with dodgy, ladders, but yeah. But. <laughs> um, so yeah, you go Hancock Gorge, which takes you to Kermit Pool. Mm -hmm. That was fun. That's a very fun hike. You got to walk through waist deep yeah. water, and everyone says you do the spider walk, but. No, you just walk you through the to. water. Don't do the spider walk because yeah, you could you'll fall slip. and you'll break your neck. But um, <laughs> someone actually did it and they fell yeah. in front of us. And it was, it was a bit how you going. So <laughs> don't do the spider walk. But uh, yeah, Kermit's Pool, you got to do it. You have to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, Joffrey's Gorge. Um, there's a few more, but. Yeah, like one, Knox Gorge and Kalamina. Yeah. But yeah. Once again, don't do don't them all. Don't try and do everything. Because you'll be stuffed. And then the last one. So you start at Dale's Campground, make your way to eco retreat and then the last one will be the free camp spot we'll put a screenshot of the wiki camps location there and we'll put the name of it mm -hmm. and you'd use that free camp spot to go and see hammersley gorge yeah because it is quite a drive away yeah. especially from dow's gorge it's very yes very it's long far drive. and it's corrugated but yeah. hammersley gorge has to be seen it has to be seen and if you're feeling a bit adventurous as well in between there i would say go and do mount bruce yes it's pretty hard but we you might give up like we did. <laughs> we didn't make it to the top. The but one and only hike we've ever, ever given up on. <laughs> yeah, but it was still pretty cool. To The point to where we got to was it was a wicked sunrise. Yeah. So, yeah, you can do that, but it's it's going to tire you out for Hammersley Gorge. So. There was actually one other rest stop on the opposite end as well, a free one, yeah. which I will write the name there because I've forgotten yeah. what it's called. But yeah, there was another free rest stop and it's on the lower yep. east side of the camp. So if you wanted to start at Dale's Gorge, then I would suggest camping there. And then it, you just really like <laughs> maximize your time without having to pay for camping because yeah. that's what we try to do quite often. All right, so number one. You probably know already. Fraser <laughs> Bloody Island, mate. Oh my God. Let your tires down and <laughs> get on the island. It will be the best beach camping you will ever experience. I was just, I was just frothing. <laughs> <laughs> I never say that word, but I was frothing. Um, it was a special place. Yeah. It is massive. The island is huge. Yeah, you it's a lot bigger than I was expecting. The fees involved, the barge, it's mm -hmm. an $135 return. Yeah, that's right. And then uh, you need to pay for your national parks fees, which are cheap, $6.75. Yep. Seventy-five per person per um, night. And, and that's for anywhere that you want to stay there. Yep. And I think there is... There's like a resort there as well. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know how many people were paying the fees, but just pay them. Yeah, a few um, people we noticed just sort of yeah. when we were at Awinya Creek, we knew that we'd snagged the last campground and but then there was someone too many sort of rocked there, up so there, <laughs> There's a few people doing the dodgy, but um, anyone can do what they want. So, good. <laughs> so that's pretty much the fees, eh? Yeah. And fill up your fuel tanks because mm. it's over $2.20. For diesel when yeah. I stuffed up and, and had again because we went we didn't realize how yeah. big it was going to be so. it's pretty bad so first campground we went to was what was it we wanted the beach zone camping yeah. so we just sort of got off the barge and we only drove about an hour or so so that we could experience Eli Creek from there and just get a feel of the sand as well and yeah the tide times and all that stuff and then after that we made our way past Nagala Rocks yes Nagala Rocks you'll get stuck there for a few <laughs> hours with everybody getting bogged we thought because we waited a little bit for the tide to go down so we could pass Eli Creek and then when we got to Nagala Rocks we thought we were experiencing the same thing we thought we were waiting for the tide to go down but it turns out it was a line full of people because someone at the front was bogged. Yeah, so. it was pretty bad. So be careful there and let your tyres down. I had them on 10 and only just made it, but it was awesome. Mm -hmm. It was an awesome experience. And then we made our way up to Sandy Cape, which was the best beach camping 
in the world, <laughs> in Australia. Tall statement. <laughs> <laughs> For me, anyway, and where we've been so far in Australia, it, it was a standout. There was a full moon that day, and the, the sun went down, and we just turned around, and there was just this it was giant like rising, yeah. moon, just like, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> yeah, you've got to go to Sandy Cape. Like we said, it's a very long way, but and it, then was, on it was the, cool. On the western side, yep. we visited a Winya Creek, which is, again, a longer drive than you're expecting yep. and a lot bumpier it's than we were rough. expecting. So you're so. going to go through the rainforest. And you've got to check your tide times there as well yep. because there's a big, big water, crossing. water crossing there. Yep. But a Winya Creek is amazing. Mm -hmm. The reason I think I loved Fraser so much is because there's this beach camping that's amazing but then you can also come into the middle and yeah. you're in the middle of a rainforest which was which we stayed in yeah we well. stayed at the central station camp how many there. days were we there for we were there four nights four nights which and was not was, enough yeah no it wasn't enough but it was still good yeah but yeah. i'd go back in a heartbeat but i mainly want to go back as well so that we could get a good day's weather to visit lake mckenzie yeah because it's supposed to be and um, well it was still amazing but yeah, we had a very, very rainy day the day we visited then. But yeah, so Fraser Island is number one, guys. It is, it, it's awesome. <laughs> I could keep talking about it all day. None of my mates want to hear it anymore. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. We uh, just want to say thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've made it to the end, uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. And don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you're new here. So we'll see you next. Actually, we're going to see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> FJ build starts guys it's uh we've been working on it already it's and, been an uh, experience <laughs> <laughs> it's a big job <laughs> so we'll see you next week for the first FJ build guys see you later